Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I heard on the weekend just doing a little yard work and stuff, but I want to show y'all today how I do my coon feeders. And what I use is a just an old tire and a rim, and I'll show y'all the tools I use and just how I do them. Very simple to make, very effective. Y'all stay tuned. All right, so what you do, you just get you an old tire and an old rim. The tools I use, it makes it fast. I got a drill, a large drill bit. Yeah, it's all all there. So I already got some of the holes pre-drilled. I'll show you how quick it is. It falls in there, that's fine. So it really don't matter how what size you make your holes. You just don't want them too big. I like to have one about this size because I got a five-gallon bucket rigged up with a piece of pipe PVC that's like a funnel where I fill them back up. So, like I said, just pre-drill your hose. Doesn't matter how many you use across here. However, this is an easy, simple way. Put these down here in the bottom, in your swamps or wherever you're hunting at, where you got coons, you want to put them on good coon travel areas. And once they find them, they'll get to using them really good and it draws them in there and you'll have some good hot tracks around for your pups. I'll show y'all in another video of me setting them out and how I fill them up. All right, so we're here in the bottom is where I want to put this feeder. I like to put it on a creek, a good travel corridor for your coons. Got some good coon trails coming up through here. We've also got a cornfield on the other side. So this is a good travel area for the coons. And this will be a good spot to get the pup started. So here's my little makeshift deal here. There's a funnel. You can actually make coon feeders out of these buckets. I've done it hang it on a tree and they just feed out of the pipe but you want a definitely smaller pipe where they can't get it out as much also squirrels are real bad about chewing the pipe and chewing a hole in your bucket so the tire feeders you know most people walk by these they think it's an old trash tire um so when your pups come through here a lot of times they'll strike the coons coming or going from the feeders they don't always strike on the feeder that's just a good way to do it just very simple I'll fill my feeder up right there. One tire and hold a five gallon bucket full. I get so much in there, just check it around. And once they start finding these tires, they'll come turn to them pretty regular. So what I'll end up doing, I don't have none today, but I'll put a game camera up here and that'll let you know the best times that these coons are coming to these feeders. You will find out, you will get a lot of daytime pictures. And if you can run cameras on your feeders, it'll let you know the best times to run your pups on these feeders. You'd be surprised that the, the way our, uh, the wee hours of the morning, you'll get feeder picks because um, last year, no, two years ago when I was using feeders, when I was training cash, I had two feeders about 200, 50 yards apart one in each little woods that had a creek in between them so one feeder i was getting early picks right at dark to about 10 o'clock at night nothing else the rest of the time the other feeder just like i said 250 feet down i was only getting picks from about three in the morning all the way up to 11 o'clock in the morning so uh this is how i do it very simple all right so what else i do after i get my feeders filled with corn right here i've got a six gallon jug mixed up with kool-aid can use any flavor i like black cherry that works best for me but this is black cherry right here and what's going to do is it's going to end up siring that corn and basically get a good aroma going so you pour so much kool-aid in shake it around and keep doing it and you get i've had uh where i could actually smell the feeders you know 20 25 feet away hard to do by yourself <laughs> filming here yeah 
you don't have to do the kool-aid but i like doing it it gives it a, that extra aroma it really gets out in the air once it starts souring and they love it well i'll be back to check on this here in a few days put a camera out and i hope y'all have enjoyed this this is how i do my coon feeders see y'all Here, check the coon feeders. Get this and see what's on caddy camera. They've been working on it pretty hard, it seems. It's a good little patch. It's got creeks running into it. Good little hardwood bottom. It's a good spot for these pups. All right, we'll see y'all. Show y'all a quick way how I fill my feeders up. I carry an old, uh, a bigger pail full of corn right here. Great Kool-Aid, black cherry Kool-Aid, all mixed. I just take a five gallon bucket and rig me up a uh, PVC pipe coming in it. Now these holes are different. But anyway, I fill this full of corn. And it fills it up real easy. You don't spill near as much. That's how I do it. And I'll get it full and I'll put that grape Kool-Aid in a tire and it sires and they can smell it long ways. Really is attractive. Got some coons coming to it, that's for sure. Got another feeder through the woods here. We're going to go check on it. See y'all. Just walked through the woods here. My second feeder. Coon tracks all on top of it. About to see also what's on caddy camera here <laughs> has some sour corn in it turkey bird just flew off so all right them skeeters will plumb tote you off in here anyway just want to show y'all this feeder well, i had a lot of a lot of pictures of coons coming to it so three at a time probably a sow and some young ones but Anyway, this is just right across the slough from the other feeder. We're going to get her filled up and see what's on camera. See y'all.